my name is Michael Graves from Red Lake Nation. I am a Minneapolis firefighter. Hi, my name is Deanna Bolio. I am from White Earth, and I work for Minneapolis, uh, the city of Minneapolis, as a community navigator. Hi, I'm Tequila Lightfield, and I'm Minikoju Lakota from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe of South Dakota, and I'm a home visitor and doula at the Division of Indian Work. Hatito, I'm Tom Wyatt. I'm a Shawnee Kwapa from Oklahoma, and I'm an emergency physician and director of the emergency department at Hennepin Healthcare. So my first question, Tom, is why is it important to wear a mask? Uh, Michael, it's really important to wear a mask because really it's this, the easiest and the best way that um, you can not just protect yourself from a virus that's transmitted um, uh, basically um, through you know, close contact, but also to protect the people uh, around you. And I know there's been a lot of efforts to get masks out to the community. Uh, people should be wearing them. And if you don't have a mask, then using a scarf or a handkerchief or bandana uh, is better than wearing nothing at all. But it's really the safest, best way for you to protect yourself and others around you from this virus. Thank you. Hey, I have a question about the uh, 10 people or fewer rule. Um, why is um, 10 people or fewer than an acceptable number? And are these 10 people um, only people who have been self-isolating? Yeah, that's a good question, Deanna. I, I think, you know, the 10-person 10, the 10 rule is not really um, based on any part science. Um, it's basically a recommendation from the experts um, thinking that probably 10 people is, uh, is a manage, manageable number of people that can practice um, safe physical distancing. Um, the way I look at it is that it's probably um, not so much the number itself, but the, what are the people doing that you're meeting with? They should all be wearing masks and they should all be uh, three to six feet apart. Um, and if they're not doing or adhering to those uh, rules, then um, maybe it's time to, to have a meeting uh, at a different time. So, um, and then, uh, you know, Takeda had mentioned before that um, it also has to do with a, a reasonable number of people um, that um, can be easily tracked down uh, if they do contact tracing. Say, for instance, a, a member of the, the, the 10 people that was found to have COVID-19, that it would be easier to, to track down and do contact tracing if you had it kept it to a, a minimum number of people of 10. So that's kind of where that number came from. Um, so my family and I, we all wear masks when we go out in public, including my four-year-old daughter. But what if we had to adjust our masks while we're out at the store or around a crowd, and then there are people there that are not wearing masks? Yeah, it's a, it's a little disappointing to whenever you're doing your part uh, and you see other people that aren't um, wearing masks. So again, uh, I think the safest thing to Kayla is really just to um, maintain that uh, physical distance, you know, move six feet away from the person who's not wearing a mask, and then you can safely uh, adjust your mask. Um, it's, it's, simple, it's as simple as that. Okay. And then kind of going around, going along with like exposure, when's the best time to get tested for COVID-19 if you are getting, if you are having symptoms or even if you're not? Yeah, so that's a great question. And the kind of our, the testing and the understanding of the testing has, um, you know, come a long way. Um, there are two types of tests. Um, there is the, the viral test, which is where you, when you go in and you get your inside of your nose or the inside of your mouth swabbed. And that's a test that um, you should get if um, you are having symptoms of COVID-19. The most common symptoms we've been seeing um, have been largely respiratory, shortness of breath, coughing, fever, but also we're seeing constellation of other symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, if you're having those symptoms and you're concerned that you have COVID-19, you should go in and get a viral test done. If you were um, recently, if you recently associated or uh, were exposed to someone that was known to have COVID, um, and you start having symptoms in particular, you should go in and get tested. And, you know, Hennepin Healthcare has clinics uh, and other spaces where you can get this testing done. And if you come to, to Hennepin Healthcare, um, you know, of course, they're going to ask you if you have insurance. If, if you don't, they're still going to test you, and Hennepin Healthcare will pay for the cost of that test, okay? There's another test called the serum antibody test that's, that's relatively new. 
And your body makes antibodies when it gets exposed to a virus um, in, in an effort to, to try to protect you and to try to give you some, um, some immunity for um, and the next time you get exposed to the virus and also um, offers some protection of not getting serious symptoms of that, of that virus. Um, so there are tests right now that can detect serum antibodies. Your body, it takes a, a little while for your body to actually make antibodies once you've been exposed to a virus. It takes around one to three weeks. Um, and although that test is available right now, um, the experts really aren't sure um, what to do with it yet. Um, it's, I think, probably going to be rolled out to the most at-risk populations, um, healthcare workers and, uh, and the like. Um, but at some point, it, it would make sense um, if they're able to test large um, parts of, you know, large groups of people and large parts of our population to see who may have some immunity to this virus. And again, in theory, it's, um, it, um, if you do have antibodies, then um, you should have some degree of protection against the, the, the virus. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Well, we talked about the importance of wearing a mask and limiting to 10 people or fewer, but with playgrounds being open, is it safe to have our children playing in the park? Yeah, Michael, that's, a, that's another good, good question. I, I think, you know, in general, you know, parks are outside and open spaces. Um, we know that most viruses don't do well in ultraviolet light, so um, that's one good thing about, um, you know, playgrounds and parks being outside. Um, but the other thing is it's kids have a really hard time physical distancing. And so I think it's best to try to talk to them uh, as a parent, you know, the best you can and try to get them to understand, um, to try to follow those rules. Um, practice good hand hygiene, a lot of hand washing, using uh, uh, hand gel sanitizer. Um, and they should be wearing a mask. That's Again, that's probably the most important thing um, that they should be doing. They should be wearing a mask. Uh, so in in your experience, uh, why, why do you think um, the virus is affecting people of color at a higher rate? I think that um, that's, a, that's a great question, Dana, and it's, it's a fairly complex question. I think the easiest way to understand it is that people of color in general have a higher um, rate of those comorbid conditions that um, make it more um, likely for you to get really sick if you if you get COVID-19. COVID so people that have heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes, tend to do much worse when they contract COVID. And um, people of color tend to have those, those diseases at a higher rate than the general population. In addition, in addition to that, I think that um, Kind of goes further into like um, some so you know some social questions um, about social determinants of health and people of color many times live in communities that don't have great access to health care or healthy foods um, may have um, unstable housing that sort of thing and so I think that if you put all those together it, it really gives you an idea why it, uh, people of color are, are um, contracting COVID-19 at, at a higher rate. Hmm. Um, this one makes me really nervous because of our elders. So is it safe um, to go to powwows and ceremonies even if they have been moved to outdoors? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And, you know, the, um, it's disappointing. I know that a lot of these are getting canceled. My, we, it's the 4th of July every year. It's our annual powwow back in Oklahoma for the Quapaw tribe. And they canceled it this year for the first time that anyone can remember. So it's very disappointing, but I, I think it's really important uh, at this time. And, and to Kayla, you said it, you know, it's really the people that are going to be at those ceremonies, in particular our elders, who are more susceptible to um, getting really sick if they get COVID-19. And if you think about, you know, th these celebrations, you know, it's just part of our culture. We're going to sit together. We're going to touch each other. We're going to eat together and laugh together. And so... As disappointing as it is, I think it's the it's the right thing right now to not, um, you know, participate in, in these lar these large groups of people, um, because we still don't really have a great idea if we have a handle on this virus. I mean, it, it looks like we don't really still have a, um, although cases are going down uh, in our state, 
Uh, we just still don't have a great handle on this virus. We don't have um, a proven treatment for it. Um, there are some promising treatments out there that are being studied. We don't have a vaccine yet. We don't have any, um, any uh, idea about um, what herd immunity in the population might be like yet. Um, so this is still the time to be safe and as disappointing as it is, I think it's best to not, um, again, participate in those large gatherings. I agree. Thank you so much. Appreciate all the information. Yep, thank you, Dr. Wyatt, for answering our questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tanka, uh, which means thank you in Lakota. Thank you, it's my pleasure, and I uh, hope we get to do this again real soon. I hope everyone um, stay safe, keep your family and friends safe. So, it's great talking with you.